There was a growing number of people out there speculating that Rivian was going to be adding LiDAR to the R2. Partly because of images like this one, where we see Rivian is wrapping their development vehicles, so these are not production builds, but they do have a lot of production components, and they didn't feel like painting them just yet, so they were wrapping them in this really creative camouflage texture, which will be really exciting to spot in the wild. But you can kind of see these little divots near the top of the R2, and through other images, people are zooming in on this kind of cutout in a lot of the body pieces speculating that Rivian must be thinking about adding LiDAR but I think a lot of this really just stems down to LiDAR in my opinion getting a little too much credit in the autonomous driving field the primary reason a lot of people want to credit LiDAR is because of course Google Waymo does use it and they have autonomous robo taxis deploying all over the country now they're in Texas they're in Phoenix they're in San Francisco and LA and a lot of people I think because they know there's this big difference between Tesla been trying to do full self-driving for so long and missing timelines after timelines so many years in a row and people are like well it's probably because they're only using cameras like they don't have the hardware to do it when in reality Waymo has LiDAR and that's why they can do what they do and I personally think it's a lot more complicated than that Waymo also relies pretty heavily on pre-mapped roads and basically a lot of their vehicles are more manually coded for the region they're in which the Tesla people would say well because it doesn't scale as well because you have to map all of the routes that the cars are driving therefore it's just not a practical solution Tesla is looking for like a generalized approach where you basically just feed FSD a bunch of data and then suddenly it can basically drive everywhere even places that Tesla has never been before and Tesla doesn't have to pre-map every road but I'm not trying to say LiDAR has zero effect on the performance of autonomous driving it's definitely a sensor, but to Tesla's credit, their point from the beginning on whether or not they need to have radar or LiDAR, there is a difference between the two. I see armchair experts in the comments constantly trying to combine the two. To be clear, Tesla has never had LiDAR on their customer vehicles, but it can sometimes be used as a calibration technique to see how accurate their cameras are measuring the distance of objects. So that's where you'll see Tesla using LiDAR on development vehicles to be like, okay, are our cameras is acting properly and are they measuring distances accurately but that does not mean the same thing as actually trying to mass produce your vehicles with lidar built in and just so we're all clear on something here rivian in the early days before they started delivering the r1 vehicles they said they were going to adopt lidar on the r1s and as they started gearing up for production of their premium much much higher priced vehicles than the r2 they actually scrapped lidar they decided they didn't need it they did still keep around radar though that's something Tesla has now abandoned but Rivian believed they could do all of their autonomous driving tasks and still do with their gen 2 vehicles without the use of lidar just to be clear Rivian believes they can do hands-free and eyes-free self-driving on their present-day vehicles assuming you have a gen 2 r1 and they don't think you need lidar okay so I'm just trying to remind everybody what Rivian's current plans or at least announced plans are so if they do plan on adopting lidar for the R2. For one, they definitely haven't told anybody. They haven't brought it up at their events or during their earnings calls. And in my opinion, the automakers that have chosen to adopt LiDAR on their customer-owned vehicles haven't seen a tremendous payoff yet, just to be clear. Like, Lucid does have LiDAR, but most people would say their, you know, driver assist functionality is pretty basic. You know, it's lane keep and occasionally a lane change here and there, but it still requires pre-mapped highways. And most people with Gen 1, you know, the early launch edition Rivians are saying that they're far more impressed with the open pilot computer that you can buy secondhand from comma AI and of course that's just using cameras that doesn't add radar or lidar to your vehicle and that apparently can do quite a bit and you know the new Volvo EX90 that has lidar in it and out of spec recently detailed how the lidar sensor in that car can actually fry smartphone cameras somehow it's not dangerous to people but if you point your camera at it and you honestly don't even have to be that far away it can permanently damage the sensor in your smartphone so personally as much as I'm skeptical around Tesla's approach and I've done whole videos on why I doubt the robo taxi approach Tesla is taking is going to scale as easily as they think and I personally think Elon is probably going to rush the launch of the robo taxi network and that could cause some major issues that could permanently make it hard for more cities to approve robo taxi use in the future I still don't think the limiting factor when it comes to autonomy and self-driving is lidar 
radar because if you've been following FSD videos for a while and you've been seeing where it performs well and where it doesn't perform well, it rarely, in my experience from watching content, maybe you guys can correct me, but it rarely has anything to do with perception. Like, it's rarely an issue where the car is driving through dense fog and it drives into the car in front of it because it couldn't see it well enough. Actually, watching a lot of different FSD YouTubers out there, there's several good ones, rarely is the problem where they have to intervene like the car wasn't going to stop in time for an object in front of them. Usually it's around blind corners where they can't see the car coming from very far away. And LiDAR doesn't necessarily help in those situations. And it's my opinion from watching where FSD succeeds and fails that the main problem is action on what the car does. Training that and making it understand what its surroundings are, what to break for, what not to break for, and when to turn and when not to turn. Like still a very common issue we're seeing on the latest versions of hardware 4 with full self-driving is that it still can't read a lot of street signs which sometimes are very important like if you're at an intersection and there's a sign that says you cannot turn right on a red light FSD doesn't understand that message so it will still try to take a right turn on a red because it doesn't understand that sign the same way it doesn't understand like you know the left lane is closed up ahead it can't read that sign and think oh I need to get into the right lane now otherwise I'm gonna be stuck in a minute and those, I think, are the bigger issues that Tesla is trying to solve with their neural net training and their full self-driving computers. Like, how do we train these cars to really understand their surroundings? And there's so much more than that than just, you know, the classic Mark Rober approach of like, is there a flat wall in front of me that's painted like a road and a sky and everything? That's just not really a common use case, but there are still instances where a vision-based system falls flat and it mostly comes down to action, not understanding what the surroundings are, not necessarily just the distance of its surroundings. Like, there's plenty of interventions where the Tesla was not just imminently about to run into something, but it's often like, okay, it's going into oncoming traffic when it shouldn't, or it's not merging when it's supposed to, and LiDAR doesn't necessarily solve any of those issues. It's just another redundancy sensor for mostly measuring things directly in front of the car. It's not really measuring distances on blind corners where you can't see cars from far away coming at you very quickly and there were examples very recently of a Waymo driving straight into a very very flooded street this happened just a couple days ago and it's probably because it's a very gradual floodplain so to the computer if it doesn't know how to perceive what its surroundings are the lidar on that Waymo probably saw that flood and thought it's flat ground because it wasn't you know particularly wavy and it's not that deep of a drop so it just sees the road steadily turn into water and LiDAR doesn't see an obstacle. It just sees flat surface ahead of it. LiDAR doesn't know the difference between a grocery bag and a cinder block. All it knows is distances with objects around it. So I'm skeptical of the mass scaling of any robo-taxi network, and I think Tesla has its own set of issues, and Waymo has its own set of issues, but at least in the short term, it appears that their approach seems to be paying off pretty effectively. But again, I don't think the reason Waymo is scaling faster than Tesla right now is because of the LiDAR. I think it has more to do with the pre mapping and more manual coding involved. All that being said, Rivian is trying to keep costs low with the R2 because it's meant to be a much more affordable version of their already pretty pricey R1 vehicles, and those don't have LiDAR. So personally, I don't think Rivian's going to be shipping R2 vehicles with LiDAR to customers. It's possible maybe for development vehicles. They are calibrating cameras, trying to get more driving data. Maybe they put LiDAR on development vehicles, but I think to keep costs down and to focus on what really matters, which is not just measuring the distances between objects around you, but understanding what those objects are and how those objects should influence what the car actually does, that's likely what Rivian is far more focused on, and that's likely why Rivian decided to scrap LiDAR in the first place. Remember, they originally announced it to have LiDAR on their R1 vehicles, and then going into production, that's when they dropped it. That's when they were like, you know what, we actually don't need this. We think cameras and radar are enough. So, kind of interesting to have so many different companies with different approaches. Volvo and Lucid are on the LiDAR train, but it doesn't really seem like any of them can do what Teslas are doing with full self-driving. Rivian's kind of in the middle where they're like, no, we don't think LiDAR is necessary, but we do think radar to a certain extent is necessary. So more hardware than Tesla, but not as much as a Lucid or a Volvo. But what do you guys think of the shortcomings? How do you feel about the Waymo that very recently on a like up-to-date car, you know, this is not an old story, just driving straight into water versus the less likely scenario, but I guess possible
level one of a Tesla driving into a painted wall. Personally, I don't think that's a very common occurrence, and even Volvo, with their EX90 vehicle, in the user manual says their LiDAR system, which fries smartphone cameras, can still be impacted by rain, snow, and dense fog, meaning the sensor doesn't even perform as well when visibility is limited, which I thought kind of defeated the point of LiDAR anyway, but all your thoughts, feel free to drop them down in the comments below, and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos, so thanks again, have an excellent rest of your day.